So here we have um, the Logos Bible software. This is for, I actually had to get this for um, my Bible college. One of the things that our dean um, wanted for all the students as well as professors was to be able to have this if we were going to be serious about our study. So I've had this now for a couple years. I know that they've had some newer versions since then, but um, the 4 is still working great for me. I probably will upgrade at some point, but um, decided to do this video because I see that a few people I know who I've told to invest in and to get this started using it. And, you know, some people ask questions about how to navigate on here. Now, I'm currently doing this on the, the uh, MacBook Pro, but um, you can use this on your uh, cell phone. It does work on Android. I got a Galaxy and um, it does work on uh, iPhones. My wife has an um, iPhone. So here we have, you look at the main part on here, and this is directly just from the app, um, which you could download in the App Store and then um, get it set up. So right now, this is what the home page looks like. I'll be honest with you. Um, if you have a Windows 10, we also have a Windows 10 laptop. It's actually a little not as congested. As you can see here that some of the words are underlaid with the pictures underneath it. Um, I don't know if it's because of the screen or whatever, but I know that on the Windows 10 laptop we have um, the Lenovo. It's a little bit bigger and uh, the screen is wider and as such, it's actually um, everything is not as spaced out. But <clears throat> this is the main screen. So you see like here at the bottom, there's a customization. There's some different things that we have going on here so we have um talking about what your free book is for the day i've already downloaded it but if you click on this you'll be able to get your free book this is for you to get your update if you want the newest version up here at the top you'll see this continually moving this is actually my um from the customization portion this is the uh different books in your library that you get so if you click this arrow this um first one is what is your preferred bible i choose to Use the New King James Version. I do alternate, but I can show you where I do that um, a little bit later. Also, you have your reading list. So these are the newest things that are have been added. Um, not necessarily what you've read, but newest things that have been added to your library. The um, the great thing about this thing is it's always updating the library. There's always tons of books. Um, these are the three most recent ones that are updated. So if you come on here, every time you open up and log into the system, it tells you that it's updating the library so there's always new content as a really great buy so if you continue click this arrow right here the next thing are things that are actually um, in my uh, in my in my library um, rotating different things this is if you would like to um, read the Bible in a day these are uh, gives you what scriptures to read Oh, I'm sorry. This was, oh, what is what is this one? Let me look and see. So if we go back down here to the customization, it'll tell you, oh, lectionary. So the first one you'll see here is choose preferred Bible, recent reading list, library slideshow, lectionary. That's what that was with the October 10th uh, Thanksgiving Day. And the final thing is read the Bible in a year. Here at the bottom, too, you can also dictate the content that shows up what do you want devotionals excerpts faithful today logos blog so on and so forth for the different things that you you actually want to utilize and things of that nature so that's what we have there um you have your read the bible in a year <clears throat> where i probably should try to do that at some point i'm pretty pretty much just go to the things that i want to go to at the moment and i probably should uh look into doing that a little bit more but those are the things that you have. So then here at the top, you see these are, so technically we're on the home screen right now. But if you look, you also have a library. So when you click on your library, that gives you, so right now it's at 487 resources. And that varies different books. So you see when you click on it, or just not even click on it, but when you move your mouse towards it, it highlights what actually um, the book is in more detail and gives you a little excerpt about what the book is about. So you have different things on here. 1,000 Bible images, um, 131 Christians, everyone should know. And if you scroll through, 
could do different things, um, different books, being holy, being obedient, being patient, being satisfied, being skillful, so on and so forth. And then you can also click in here and type in, so say we want Message Bible. It'll give you everything that we have on Message. So when you click Message there, everything that shows up for Message shows up. So you see the different things in which you have at the very top was the Message Bible. But there's other resources here with the word message in it. Opening up Haggai, um, First Timothy, things of that nature. It's really, I do highly recommend um, this library. It's wonderful. And over here you see it says browse or prioritize. So let's click out of there. Um, the screen that I normally tend to be on, I'm normally not on the home screen. Um, nor am I in the book section. I am normally in the search section because the search section is what gives you what you've already been working on. So as you see, the search section is very in-depth. You have to your left um, the actual search if you wanted to search something. Let's X out because don't need that. And all it's going to do is X out the little tab. So we backspace one more time. I mean, X out one more time. And then this is the main thing. So as you see, I have currently open New King James Version, Philippians um, 1.15. <clears throat> and in doing so, it also has commentary on the side here. So if we look at this side, we have different things, different commentary. So if I want a passage guide on that, it gives me different things that I may want to look at in reference to Philippians in that section. So we have studies in the Greek New Testament, word pictures in the New Testament, opening up Philippians, uh, Matthew Henry's commentary, which most people are most familiar with and using. Down here, you have your cross-references um, verses. Um, that go along with what it is that I have set up right over here. In this section, you can either type in what you want as far as the scripture, or you can actually just scroll through and find a particular um, book as well as chapter that you're looking for. Over here on this side um, is very helpful as well. This is our Explorer. This gives us a more in-depth look at some of the things that we may want to look at um, based upon our scripture. So you have Jesus, chain, fruit, Father, Yahweh. And then coming down a little bit further, you have media, and then you have cross-referenced verses. Now, a cool thing about this is say we want to look at the word affliction, right? So let's just highlight that. And the moment, if you notice, the moment we highlighted that, it then began to give us more information in regards to just that particular word. Um, in addition to that, you have a follow-up scripture with affliction that deals with um, giving a little uh, background content. So you have over here, um, you click on my content, you click on media. You can actually pinpoint this to have this set up different um, things. So you can do an explore, you can add passage analysis, probably text comparison is always good. Um, and again, these are just things that we type in when you use these little tabs at the top. Um, text comparison is always good to give us a good idea of other what other translations are saying in reference to it. So this is for 16 right here. Let's do another tab. I love this. The pronunciation of words, you can get that as far as, especially when you're dealing with the names in the Bible, you know, some of those names in the Old Testament can be a little hard. That is always a phenomenal tool. Um, what do we want to look at? passage analysis so this gives us based upon Philippians 1 16 that we were looking at Christ is preached in New King James Version then you see the new um, international version the English Standard Version in comparison to the same thing so we have that there I'm gonna X out Cited by. All right, so 
so we're going to explore some of these things a little bit more. Let's pull up right here at the same time. And we see here all the different Bibles and resources that carry Philippians 1.16. Let's look at what the New Living Translation has to say in reference to the same um, text. So we had the New King James Version here. The former preached Christ from selfish ambition, not sincerely supposing to add affliction to my chains. And then we look here. What is it? They preach because they love me. For they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. So you see that there's um, definitely a variation in what is being said based on the uh, Bible version which you use. But you that, that's a very great tool. And another way to do that is easily you can click here and showcase different things that you want. This is your panel. So up here is the same way in which you clicked here and you're able to find it. You can also click here. Um, you hit this little drop down and this will give you all your different Bibles right here let's look here what else do we want to look at okay hold on It's not opening. So is that loading? <clears throat> so X out this. Okay, so then we come back over here. Let's look at a few different things and see what we actually have. Now, this is cool. So we can back on this left hand side here. This is where you're going to be able to get, like I said, your commentaries, your cross references. You can actually continue to go down. If you continue here, you get parallel passages, um, biblical people. We're able to get illustrations and things of that nature, biblical things. Um, Biblical places. It's it's so vast. Music, media resources, topics that you can get coming from Philippians, and each one, if you click on it, will give you um, a new topic. Illustrations. If there are to be any illustrations, they would be right here in this thing right here. Compare versions. So this is so vast what you can do here so if you click this add button up here at the top you can choose whatever it is that you would want to see and then of course you can make notations and things of that nature so if we click here we clicked at the top we just made a new tab and then we what do we want to look at for preaching prayerless wordless personal books see so I haven't added any personal books yet so I can do that by hitting the start button here and you see what it does is it actually takes me to the top here and it says personal book builder views so we can do that at a later time but let's go back and we're now back in the in the actual app here we'll do that personal I'll do the personal books later and show how to add that but these are just a few of the different things that you can do um, with this Bible software it is so so vast and so in-depth um, see here Now, you notice <clears throat> what ended up happening was the moment I clicked here. So say I clicked Matthew 5.16. Remember, we had Philippians um, 1.16 up. Now is now changed to Matthew 5.16 here. So the same way you were able to see that scripture there, 
if I wanted to further look into not just that scripture, but surrounding scriptures to get proper context of what was going on, I have it here. Now, what's nice about this is the moment they all seem to work in sync, all three sides. So the moment I've done Matthew 5.16 here, it then carries over to my main section, which is what I use the most because this is where I get the actual Bible. And then Chris carries over here. So as you see in our references section, still keeping with the New King James Version. It now shows references scriptures in relation to what we just typed in from Matthew 5.16 or what we just tapped on. So then you're able to see different variation scriptures that work with it. And then if we click on the explore page, everything is now going to be in reference to what we looked at in 5.16. Then if you look at comparison text, oh, comparison text is still in in uh, that. So let's change that real fast and make that Matthew. And what's nice is if you see here, you notice that it automatically starts giving you different points. So you're able to see what different portions of the Bible in reference to Matthew is broken down into sections of what's actually taking place. So we want to do Matthew 5. And as we do that, this should change up. So we see that Matthew 5, the first part is the Beatitudes, but we're in the similitudes. So we're here in this section. Let's click on that. Let's see. And then we start getting different translations of the comparison because the comparison again is giving us different translations of the same thing you can always change which ones you have because it's up here to what um, translations you actually want to have compared so as we see and we come back over here these are all my cross references which are really good because you always want to verify what it is that you're looking at with the word and see what other scriptures take you to get an overall feel of what it is that you are trying to study or look into or read. And um, these are just a couple of the things in which the Logos Bible software can do. I'll be sure. Um, check with me later as I'll try to add some more content and dive in a little deeper into some of the study and things in which I do. Um, to prepare myself to uh, teach but again I'm working off of uh, Logos Bible Software 4 and this is from the MacBook Pro and uh, my name is Gamal thanks uh, don't forget leave a comment um, like button subscribe uh, let me know what you think of the video or if there's anything else that I can help you with to be helpful